All right, welcome back guys. In the last video, we saw how we can make an authorized request in order to retrieve our user. And on this video, we're gonna see how we can remain logged in when we refresh the page. Because currently, if I were to go and log in, so I'm gonna log in with this John Doe account, I get my access refresh token. I'm currently logged in. So I see the dashboard and the logout button. But as soon as I refresh the page, I'm rerouted to the login page. And then I see this register and login page here. And I also don't see these cookies here. So that's a problem that we currently have. So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and start dealing with this issue. So back in my code, the way that we're gonna deal with this issue is if I go inside of my backend right now, and then my project folder urls.py, we made an endpoint here for this API token verify route. And then this uses that token verify view, which comes from REST framework, simple JWT. And this is gonna grab the access token and it's gonna check whether it's still valid. So this is something that we tested before when I was testing out the backend endpoints. So we know that this right here is gonna do that checking for us. So this is something that I can make use of. So I'm gonna now open up my front end source and then pages and then inside of API account, I'm gonna make a brand new file, which I'm gonna call verify.js. So this way, in our Next.js client, when I hit API slash account slash verify, we're gonna hit this endpoint right here. So let's go ahead and start defining this. I'm gonna do export default async request response. And I can also close that side window for now, zoom in a little more. It's gonna be an arrow function. And then I want this to be a get request. So I'm gonna do if request.method is equal to get. Then we're gonna proceed with this request. Otherwise, we're gonna return back an error response. So first I'm gonna do a response.setHeader with allow. And then what I wanna allow is get request. So in here I'm gonna have get. And then I'm gonna return my response with a status of 405. And I'm also gonna send back some JSON with an error. And I'm gonna have my backticks and it's gonna say method and then request.method not allowed. And then if we do get a get request, then in that case, what I want to do is I want to parse my access token. So I want to retrieve that value and then I want to pass it along in my API token verify request on my Django backend server. That way I can verify whether the access token is valid. So this parsing is something we saw before how to do, but I can write it out from scratch here just so that we can do it one more time. So I can do that with const cookies. So this is going to be my variable that I store the parsed value. Then I can do cookie.parse and then request.headers.cookie is how I can parse that value. And I also have to make sure I bring in my cookie package. So I'm gonna import cookie from cookie, and that should be cookie. And then in the case that we don't have any cookies, one thing that I can do is have this notation with the two question marks and then an empty string. So this way, if this is null or undefined, we're just gonna parse this here. If this isn't null or undefined, then we're gonna parse these cookies. So this is something we looked at previously, again, with our user. We did the exact same process. I did all the console.logs just so we could see the output. So if you're unsure of how this works, then go ahead and review that last video. And then I'm gonna grab the access token right now. So I'm gonna store that inside of a variable called access, and I'm gonna grab that from cookies.access. And then if this happens to be undefined, then in that case, I'm just gonna have this access be false. So again, I can use this notation here in order to do that. And then I can check if access is equal to false, then in that case, we can return an error response. So I can return a response with a status. In this case, I'll do something like a 403 forbidden response, pass back some JSON. And then this right here, if we hit this, we're not gonna make our request or Django backend API. We're just gonna send a response that this is invalid because we don't have an access token in our browser. And then here I'm gonna have an error and it's just gonna say user forbidden from making the request, something like that. And then after that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna JSON stringify the access token because we have to pass it along in that verify request. So I'm gonna do const body is json.stringify and then this has to be called token when I pass it along. And then I'm gonna grab my access token and that's gonna be the value of this token, which is gonna be in JSON data. And then I'm gonna have my try catch. And then this try part is where I'm gonna make this request to my Django backend API. So I'm gonna do const API response is await fetch 
and then the endpoint is going to be that API URL, which is something I have to bring in. So at the top, I'm going to import this API URL. And then this is coming from our config folder. So config index. So now I have access to that. And then our endpoint is slash API slash token slash verify slash. So make sure to have this trailing slash here. And I'm going to pass some options to this with the method. So this is expected to be a post request because that's what REST framework simple JWT expects for this endpoint. Then I'm going to have my headers. I'm going to have an accept header. It's going to be application JSON. And then I'm also going to have a content type of application JSON. And that's because I'm passing along this right here. So I also have to make sure I pass that in this request. So I'm also going to pass a body, which is going to be this JSON data here. And then how this endpoint works is if we get a status of 200, we know that this was successful. So I can check if API response.status is 200. And then if that's the case, we can return a success response. So what's happening here is we're grabbing this access token. We're verifying whether it's still valid. And if it is, then that's all we really care about. And then we can set that is authenticated piece of Redux state to be true. So that's all we're really using this endpoint for. That way, when we refresh the page, we know whether the user should still be authenticated. So in this case, I'm going to return a response with a status of 200, just to match with what our Django backend API sent back. And then I can return some JSON, which is just going to have a success object in here. And it's going to say something like authenticated successfully. And again, this right here is not something I'll make use of, but if you had things like alerts, you could always make use of something like this. Although also for an endpoint like this, you might not want to do that just because this is only happening when you refresh the page and not necessarily when you fill out a login form. So now I'm going to handle the else here. So this is if we don't get a status of 200, then something went wrong. So in this case, I'm going to return a response with a status and that's going to match my API response.status. And then I'm going to have some JSON, which is just going to have an error. And then I'll say something like failed to authenticate. And then in my catch, I'm going to have something similar. So I'm just going to copy this, paste it into here. And then instead of having this here, I'm going to hard code a status of 500. And then I'll say something like something went wrong when trying to authenticate. So we're going to go ahead and save that. So right now we have our endpoint in place. So the next thing I want to work on is my action creator, which is going to send off a request to this endpoint, which is then going to send our request to our Django backend API, which then we're going to see is our access token valid. If it is great, we're going to set our is authenticated piece of Redux state to be true in that case. That way, when we refresh the page, we're going to have that piece of Redux state having the correct value. That way we can also have other things in the application reflected appropriately. Like should we show the login and register buttons in the nav bar or should we show a dashboard and logout button? So things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my actions types and auth because I'm going to work in both of these sections. I'm going to close that side window again. And then below this load user success and fail, I'm going to make two new dispatch types. I'm just going to copy this and paste just to make it easier. I'm going to grab this load user section, do a command D three times to select all four of these. And then I could call this something like verify success, but I think a name I'm going to use is authenticated success and authenticated fail. And that's what's going to be utilized for this request. So that's what we're going to dispatch in our action creator, either the success or fail, depending on what this endpoint returns. So we're going to save that, go into my auth.js inside of my actions folder. And then I'm going to bring in these two dispatch types. So authenticated success and authenticated fail. And then below this load user is where I'm going to define this action creator. So I'm going to do an export const and I'm going to call this something like check auth status. It's going to take no parameters. It's going to be an async dispatch. And then in here, I'm going to have my try catch where I make my API request. So inside of this try part, I can do a const response is await fetch. And then the endpoint is going to be API slash account slash verify, because that's what we're hitting here. API account verify. It's going to be on our next JS backend API. And then once again, this right here, we're expecting to be a get request. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and pass along in these options. I'm going to do method of get. And I'm going to have my headers. 
And then the only header I'm going to have is an accept header. So I'm going to have application JSON for this accept header. And then I won't be passing any kind of body because this is a get request. And then after this, I want to check the status of this. So I'm going to do if response.status is 200 because that's what we're going to pass back. This is successful right over here. Response.status of 200. Again, to mirror what our Django backend API sent back. And then if this is the case, then I can dispatch the authenticated success. So I'm going to dispatch a type of authenticated success. If we didn't get a 200 status, then we're going to pass back the fail case. So I'm going to copy this, paste, and change this to be my fail dispatch type. And then finally, in the catch part, I'm going to have the exact same thing. Just going to dispatch a type of authenticated fail. So that's our action creator in place now. So the next thing I'm going to do is open up my auth.js inside of my reducers file. And let's handle these dispatch types. So once again, I'm going to bring these inside of here. So my authenticated success, authenticated fail, and let's handle these. So right below my load user success and fail, I'm going to make two new cases, one for my authenticated success. And then in the case where I'm successful, I'm going to do is authenticated is going to be true. So that's my piece of Redux state that I'm going to be adjusting. And then I also want these other values to be untouched. So above here, I'm going to do a spread operator on state. There we go. And then I'm going to handle my case for authenticated fail. I'm going to have, whoop, I don't know why this keeps auto filling. I'm going to have spread operator on state. And then I'm going to make is authenticated to be false. And then another thing I want to do is also make sure that user becomes null. That's another thing that would be good to do in here. And then another thing that we have to keep in mind is when we refresh the page, we're going to get an authenticated success, which is going to set this right here to be true, but our user value is still going to be null. So another thing we have to do is go inside of our auth.js file in our actions folder. And when this is successful, we also have to make sure that we dispatch our load user. So right below here, I'm going to dispatch my load user. So that way, if we're authenticated, we're also going to update that user value in our Redux state. And that way we can reflect that value inside of our dashboard. All right, so now that we have this logic in place, the next thing is to determine where should we put this. So I think the place that makes sense is in my higher order components layout, because this is something that I want to happen on every single page. So by putting it here, I can make this logic once and it'll be on every single one of my pages. So to implement this logic here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import my use effect. So this way, when this component mounts, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this action creator. Then I also need to bring in my use dispatch. This is from React Redux. And then I also have to bring in that action creator, which is my check auth status action creator. And that's coming from actions auth. So there we are. And now because I'm going to have a use effect, I'm instead going to have a return here with curly braces wrapping everything. And then I'm going to fix up this indenting. I'm going to have my use effect. And then I'm going to have a dispatch here. And I also have to make sure I define my dispatch. So const dispatch is use dispatch. And then I'm going to make some checks here. I'm going to check if dispatch and dispatch isn't null and dispatch isn't undefined. If that's the case, then I can dispatch my check auth status. So there we are. And now because we have this layout on every single one of our pages, so on my dashboard, my homepage, my login and register page, I have this layout on all these pages. So we're going to make sure that we dispatch that on all those pages. And then one other thing I want to do is something I noticed in a previous video was on this login page. I should also put in dispatch inside of here. So that way when this updates, we make sure that we run this here. So that's just a little thing I want to add in there. So now that we have our logic in place, let's go ahead and test this out. So we already see that it's working. So as soon as we went here, we ran that check auth status and now we're authenticated. And then I can also check my application and cookies. Let's refresh this. And there we are. We see the refresh and access token now showing up in here. 
And then if I go to my home page, I refresh, I still remain logged in. So I see both of these values in here. I see the dashboard, the logout. And then if I click the logout now, and then I refresh, then I'm here on the home page. And if I check my nav bar, I have the register and login buttons. So perfect. Now we have logic in place, which is going to check whether we are authenticated. And then we can just check one more time that everything's in order. So I'm going to log in with my John Doe account once more. So let's check out our Redux state currently. So we have user null is authenticated false and these other values false when I log in. Let's now check out the Redux state. So now I have my user data. So I have the first name John Doe. The username is authenticated is true. So that's perfect. And now when I refresh, we can check out our Redux state and see if it updated accordingly. So I see the user is here. So that's perfect because when we dispatched our authenticated success, we also ended up dispatching our load user success, which is right over here. So perfect. We managed to achieve the goal of this video. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you haven't yet, please hit that like button. It goes a long way to help a channel like mine grow and get recognized so others can benefit from the videos I release as well. Also, I have links in the description that you can check out. I have one for an e-commerce course you can check out if you're interested in learning to develop an application like that. I also have a link for joining my Web Development Kings Facebook group. That way, if you want to ask me something personally, then you can go right ahead and do that and I'll happily help you out. It doesn't cost you anything. So if you're scratching your head about something, then you can go right ahead and ask me to help you out. Only questions I probably won't answer are if you want me to help you build some kind of personal project as I don't quite have the time for that. Although you can always post something in the group itself. That way, other developers in the group can help you out with something as well. The group is all about growing your expertise as a developer. So if you're interested in that, then go ahead and click that link in the description and join the family. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notification bells, that way you don't miss out when I release a new video, and I'll see you in the next one.